said at the top, these two teams know each other quite well. That's an understatement. Here's a look at the series history. They meet many times each season because they typically both advance deep into the playoffs. So this is what they've done in this championship final. Four and three, the edge for USC, and they've really dominated the last decade plus in women's college water polo. The rest of the college water polo world, they're kind of like Ron Burgundy out by the pool. We've been coming to the same party for 12 years and we're in no way depressed. They've had to watch these two teams crush it, Brenda. Yes, they have, but I will say there's been some upsets in this tournament, so you do see the parity of the sport, but it's great to see these two dominant teams go at it again. And they are gonna meet once more for USC, their fifth straight trip to the NCAA final. Trojans come in at 28-2 on the year. Stanford 23 and one, their only losses to each other. This was perhaps destined. Our officials in this one, Alex Dankiewicz, Darren Spiritusano, a veteran crew, a good crowd on hand here. Stockton loves water polo. They have shown out here tonight and we are underway as USC will get us started. Winning the opening sprint, they have the white caps on, Stanford with the dark. And it is the women of Troy moving right to left on your screen. Sun setting here in the Central Valley, provides a little glare off the pool. That'll clear up around the end of this first quarter as we get underway with USC on the attack for the first time. It'll, it'll be interesting to see what SC does. Stanford did a really good job on Tilly Kearns last game. So if they could get her going early, it's gonna be good. Look inside, they try to go to Tilly Kearns. As you mentioned, the powerful center from Australia. And it's a ball under call taken away by Stanford. They've met three times already this year. USC one and two. They met most recently in the MPSF final. That was a 12-7 win for Stanford. It allowed them to confirm the number one seed in this tourney. They are the top team in this field here in Stockton. Both teams have dominant centers, so who's gonna be able to establish the outside game and the inside game? They go outside first, Jewel Romer lighting it up. The junior connects, and our first goal goes to the Cardinal. And I think they read my mind. I was gonna say SC <laughs> needed to do that instead of put the ball into Tilly, but there you go, we'll see. And on the replay, Aria Fisher, right side of your screen, she's drawing the attention of one and then two players. The centers are so talented, it's going to open up shots from the outside. You need, um, yeah, inside outside attack. I always think about basketball in that way. Get it into the big, pass it out to the perimeter. Trojans now go to work. Minute deep here, first quarter, NCAA Women's Water Polo Championship. Stanford looking to repeat. And you'll see a deep zone by Stanford because they're trying to neutralize Tilly. Oh, Kerr, that's a power turn and draws the exclusion, setting up our first power play. She cupped that ball, turned quickly, and was able to draw the exclusion against the Cardinal. USC will have the first six on five try here, looking to level this game early. Such a great move out of the water to kind of show the officials and then that power turn. And it works like a charm to Haney. The lefty comes through on the skip. The power play goal is there and the Trojans have an answer, we're even at one. And I think Tuhaney's gonna be a key for them. If you you know watched the semifinal yesterday, they're lefty for USC, UCLA got a couple on, on Avatar, so look out for her. You're exactly right, Emma Lineback and Malia Allen, both lefties, they came up with four goals combined in the semifinal yesterday, not enough for the Bruins. But Tuhaney, able to hit, a bit underrated on this team of stars for USC, but the lefty has been clutch for a long time. And you will need everyone today, so it's good to see her get on the board early. Shot clock to 13, looking inside. It's Hushchild battling, Fisher breaks free. Loose ball, a scrum, and coming away with it, Caroline Stern. And that'll be a, a matchup, right? Like we talked about, Hushchild could do a little bit of everything, so that was some great defending. That's a matchup she has had to deal with many times in national team practice. Trying to work defensively against Aria Fisher, doing it here in the title match. Here's Belly Weber, conference player of the year in the MPSF. She'll take a look. Shot clock to six, Trojans gotta go. Here's a foul near six meters for Julia Yanov, rises up and they'll wave it off. She was inside six meters on an ordinary foul here in water polo. You have to be beyond these yellow cones to shoot after you've been fouled. She was right at the marker. On this end, look at the dish, Fisher moving inside. Cross pass, Neuschel wide open. Stanford in front, 2-1. The pass, and if you notice something Stanford does really well is really push out that counterattack. It's a long pass by Avatar to a great dish from 
Fisher to Neuschel. This was three of their big guns working in concert. Romer, Fisher, Neuschel, back of the net. It's a 2-1 lead for Stanford. Ryan Neuschel, the redshirt junior from Goleta, the last of the Neuschel trio that has played water polo at the highest level. Older sisters, Jamie and Kylie, both and Olympic be, gold medalist, she's maybe next. Yes, and it'll be interesting which team can settle into their defense, right? That was a great defensive possession by Stanford, but that led to that counterattack. So whoever can get that flow on defense, I think will take a little bit of control of this game. And so often, Brenda, you've played in these high level matches, the first four, five minutes, trying to figure out which end is up. There's so much energy yes. and nerves. <laughs> That's so true. There's so much adrenaline, but it's who's gonna stay calm, who's gonna follow the game plan. You talked about composure at the top. It, it's a cliche, but it is so true in a match like this. And exclusion, USC back to work on the six on five. Christina Hicks going off. And Honey Vandaway O'Shea has come on for the Trojans. And there you have Paige, right? Going on a drive, being dynamic, drawing that attention, getting their teammates going. Vandaway O'Shea takes a look. Here's Tahaney. They work it around Ianov along two meters. Plenty of time for the Trojans. Sides coming even now, advantage is over. Hoschild takes a look, she'll load it up, bar out, rebound, corralled in front by Fisher in a pile, and she comes away with it. That was a great attack, great shot. Sometimes they just don't go, but you can't lose confidence with that. No, those are, are plays you look at, you get everything you wanted but the finish. On this end now, Jenna Flynn pours that right inside. Romer trying to work, showing her versatility, but Stern off her line to gather that up. And I would even argue that that's a great possession by Stanford, right? Pushing up the tempo, just couldn't finish at the end there. This is what we'll notice throughout this match. Players are labeled in certain positions, but all of them can do seemingly everything. Yes, and I think it's great to see that at the college level. You see it on Team USA, and I think that's the reason why Team USA has been so dynamic. Another exclusion here. This time it's Celeste Weinbell, who just came on, going off. That skip inches away for Vandaway O'Shea. She can't hit. And USC now one for three on the advantage, sides back even. As a shooter, you hate those lucky bounces out, and as a goalkeeper, you love them. That goalie has no problem with that ricochet. So take that save. <laughs> We're more than halfway through this opening quarter, 2-1 lead for Stanford. Arnold at 23-1 on the year. Timer to three. That pass to no one in particular, taken away. That was Tahaney out into the passing lane. SC off to the races, out in front of Yanov. Defenders giving chase, Trojans moving in. She draws three, has to put on the brakes and wait for some reinforcements as no one was with her. Good recovery by Stanford. Yeah, great recovery, great composure. 323 left, shot clock to 21. So plenty of time for the Trojans. And we'll see which team could keep up this high tempo that both teams are trying to push right now. Yeah, the energy is high. This is a quick pace. Vandaway O'Shea lets it go, deflected, and it comes back to Avatar, able to make the stop. Sometimes those can be a tough luck own goal, but the deflection enough to slow it down. And they have the numbers on the counterattack. Pushing to Romer. Romer takes a look, under three to go, first quarter. Here's Fisher now out high. It's Neuschel in at two meters posting up as Weinbelt drives through. We talk about the players that can do multiple. There you go. Weinbelt peels off the defense and scores almost the identical goal that Neuschel delivered earlier. And Stanford off to a good start here, up 3-1. And it's like what you mentioned earlier, right? Different versatile players. Neuschel's not your typical center, but she's in there because she can do it. And then the great passing. Celeste Weinbelt, not the biggest scorer on the Stanford team, just her ninth goal on the year, but a big hit here in the first quarter. There's a look at her numbers coming into today. Just about two and a half to go, first quarter. Hoschild pressured, waiting to double Kearns. They'll give USC the outside shot. Hoschild will walk it into six meters. Alejandra Osnar has come on, she handles. Shot clock to seven, lefty lets it go, up over the cage and away. And that was a great after goal play by USC, right? You set up Paige with Tilly on the same side. In transition, in exclusion, this is away from the ball as Avatar was looking to set the table. Stanford will now go up on the advantage. 2.10 to play, 
first quarter. Ella Woodhead has come on in the 19 cap out high. Here's Romer, now Woodhead. He'll give her the shot. Good luck, Weinbelt again. Again gets to that side of the cage and Celeste Weinbelt has two. That was great ball movement, great ball faking. And, and that's what you're gonna need in these big games, right? It's like you're all scouted, so is your seventh player, your eighth player off the bench, are they gonna come in and rise to those moments? Brenda, how often have you been in these games, and like you said, it's not the name you're thinking about, it's the other person that oh, comes through. Oh, it's happened more often than you think, right? And as, as a top name back in the day, right, I knew who to look for that yep. was gonna score those goals <laughs> for us. Power play coming again for the Trojans, their fourth opportunity, just one for three. They're trailing 4-1 early, big chance here to get one back for USC. The exclusion there going against Maggie Hawkins. Osnar now, around the way, Hoschild, not there, gets it back as they knock her down on the perimeter, and that's over the cage for Morgan Netherton, the freshman who came on. And it'll be important for them to really try and get one of those six on five opportunities. There's Paige making a great steal, heads up play, trying to make something happen for her team. They were looking for Katie Lyons, long range, Hoschild lurking, now fires ahead on the hand to Kearns, save Avatar! What a stop! Hoschild throws a dime, catches Kearns on the hand, but Stanford's there. What a pass by Paige Hoschild, and then what a block. Avatar, the junior from Newport Beach, a crucial stop. More than 200 on the year. We're under a minute to go in this first quarter. The moments, these are the moments. Big opportunities to make big plays. Timer to six, here's Woodhead. Works it to Fisher, wave it off. They'll say Aria Fisher, offensive foul, grabbing the suit with the off hand, trying to control position. Ball back to the Trojans. You know, our sport so much happens underwater, but some things <laughs> sneak up on top, you're gonna get called from. It is a difficult game to officiate, but that one was clear for the referees. Maria Giral on the four cap, here's Weber. They try and go inside, that pass was deflected, Romer got a piece of it, Fisher picks it up, shot clock is off, the Cardinal can play for the final look in this first quarter. And they're pushing the counter, they have a deep zone, so it's it's impressive to see them still be able to push out a counterattack after being so far deep in the zone with those that dominant center of Tally Kearns. You get a sense of the fitness level of this squad as Aria Fisher a long way from home now, shot clock off, game clock to six, pours it in, Romer lost control, Giral gets it back, Two seconds left, and they won't get a shot away. That's all for this first quarter. The defending champs making a statement here early. A 4-1 lead. We told you all about the names you know on Stanford. Sometimes it's the reserves that make the biggest plays. Celeste Weinbelt, eight goals coming in, two big ones. Cardinal in front by three. The women of Troy, they're faithful, have turned out with the big heads, ready to cheer on their squad. Second quarter on the way. This has been a sport dominated by the Pac-12. If you look at all the national titles, John Tanner with the Cardinal, eight. Adam Trafori now with Team USA, seven. Jovan Babic, of course, piling up the titles in his time at USC. And as we look at our current coaches in this one, John Tanner, an institution on the farm. 26th season, picked up his 600th win earlier this year against Fresno State. And he has eight NCAA titles, looking to add another as we show you here. They have made every NCAA tourney that has ever been played going back to 2001. And they're back here again with a chance to take another title. Back home to Avery as we're underway in this second quarter. Brenda Villa, Greg Meskel here with you from Stockton, California home of the Pacific Tigers. I think the adjustments SC has to make is start firing from the outside. They have the firepower, they can't just depend on their center. So the shots are there from the perimeter. Here's a look for Tahaney. She has the one goal, but this one is off the mark. And it didn't go in right, but that's what they need. They need to get that confidence going, they need to just get one, and that's gonna help them. 
talk about the comparisons to basketball, right? If you're going to leave a shooter open behind the three-point line, they've got to let it fly to keep the rest of the offense or the defense honest. Exactly, exactly. Fisher now in a corner, works to Romer. Let's see what adjustments the Trojans are able to make defensively. Celeste Weinbelt getting in space for two big goals. Jenna Flynn has played so well against the Trojans this year. That entry, a bit of a blind pass in as the shot clock expires. And USC gets it back. They did a nice job there fronting the post, letting nothing easy happen on the inside. No, and that was a great, I mean, nothing happened in that possession, but they used the whole clock, right? So sometimes it's these little battles that you need. To Haney, as he turns in a tussle with Wallace. And a grab of the suit and will lead to an exclusion. USC drawing these chances, just unable to convert thus far. One for four already. And these are the things I know Stanford wants to be physical. There it is. One time. Hush child to Kearns. The power play connect. And only a matter of time before Tilly Kearns got in the mix. That was a great pass to a great redirect to Tilly Kearns. And SC is driving. Stanford's trying to be physical. So that's how they're ending all those rejections. So Stanford's going to have to make that adjustment or else they're going to be playing a lot of five now. Tilly Kearns now with nine goals against the Stanford Cardinal this year. She has been able to go off in some of these contests. Now 68 on the year for the Redshirt Junior from Sydney, Australia. Yeah. Stepping through, Flynn. Shot clock to 10 as Romer. Quick pass and a field block. Great defense, you think on offense, sometimes you make too many passes and you give up that one opportunity. And I think there, a few of them were saying, I shouldn't have passed that up, but good for it. USC getting those blocks in there. Yeah, those windows close in a hurry where there might be a shot from the outside. And this game is um, momentum swings, right? So like here, there's a momentum swing, so how are you gonna then get it to and go back your way? And another big momentum swing there. Hotchow breaks inside, has a good look, but Avatar has made some huge stops. And from a save to a six on five. Good look at the stop here from my Avital. Trying to go cross cage, she was ready. Power play for the Cardinal, just their second. It's a 30 second timeout, so we'll keep things here as Stanford will shuffle their lineup. And, and this is hard, right? Like the centers are getting, you know, you're underwater, you're here, you're there, you're coming up for air, you're trying to get back on defense, and then you get that ejection. So Tilly might have to sit out for a little bit now with earning that exclusion. And you're so spot on. You look at the last 30 seconds at each end of the pool and you felt as if USC is picking up some steam and now Stanford takes it right back. Neuschel, here's Fisher. Flynn. Plenty of time on the advantage and on the clock as they cruise it along two meters. The rare bad pass there from Romer puts that on the water. That slows down the six on five. Sides coming even now, shot clock to five. They dump it in anyway, looking for a turn and a ball under. So Weber using the off arm to push that under the surface. That'll generate a turnover, and they kill off the power play. And it's a momentum stopper, so that was a good big play for them. Now to Yanov, who again is out in front, but looking for some assistance. Five minutes to play, first half. 4-2 lead for Stanford. We have another center in there. We'll see what USC can come up here with this different lineup. It's gear all now in at two meters. Weber, shot clock to four. To Haney, at a time with one. And the shot clock sounds before they can get a shot away. Again, stifling defense here from the Cardinal. And I think Weber's probably thinking, hey, maybe I take that shot. Because she's someone that's been having a great year. Take that shot. Be confident. Has been an offensive engine for USC. 70 goals. Thought twice about it that time. Timer to 10 here for Romer. Wave off the goal. An exclusion. One of those tough luck plays for Stanford. They would obviously have loved the shot. Instead, they'll reset in a six on five. The swings right over here. There was a goal that, you know, bounced out for SC. Now this one. So, hey, you got to make the most of the next possession. And with that, Giral subs out, Kearns in the box, waiting to return. Fisher I, looking for an angle. And I think it's whatever team could get control of the six on five. Either team hasn't been able to do that. A second exclusion. So USC makes a big play there for a ball under. Instead, it's a kick out, six on four now. 
One coming back, it returns six on five. Stanford still with the edge. Romer, save made by Stern. And then an exclusion on the attack. Wallace comes back to try and force a takeaway from Julia Yanov. And everything clicking here for the Trojans. It is, they have to really capture this moment now, right? They're waving off these momentum. Both teams are playing physical. The refs are not gonna let it go. So now it's who's gonna settle down and finally make this almost two goal turnaround happen. Couple of changes. USC calls a 30 second timeout to get their offense set up. In the front court now as they have a six on five. They're sixth here in this first half. Halfway through the second quarter, this is a rapid pace in this national championship, cruising along through this first half. Mandalay O'Shea has returned. Oh, both lefties are in. That's dangerous on that side of the pool. Hoshchild makes a count. Page delivers. It's a great setup, right? You put in both of your lefties. You have Hoshchild on the opposite side. So now it's which side are we going to attack? And it's a great execution. Trojan coach Marco Pinterich to talk this year about Hoshchild. She can certainly do it offensively. She has scored more goals than this in her career in the past. 68 as a freshman. So that hasn't been her game this year. She's looked to set up the younger players. A selfless leader working alongside Weber and Kearns to guide this Trojan team. But make no mistake, the offense is there when they need it. Now a turnover. It's a one goal game and the ball back to USC. That's the beauty of water polo. So action pack, momentum swings. Just that fast we're on this end. It's Tahaney now posting. Hoshchild out high once more. Shot clock to 10. They're doing like a double set. Tilly Kearns is out, so they have to find another way to work in their centers. Vandaway O'Shea, her shot from deep. That was field blocked out on the perimeter. A race for it and getting there just in time. Avatar as Weber was giving chase. In transition, far up the pool. There'll be an exclusion. This one will go against Hoschild. And the Cardinal will have their fourth power play. They're 0 for 3 right now. One area where they haven't excelled in this first half. They really need to get one going, right? This is a perfect time for them to seize that moment. It's Flynn. That's a heavy foul. A little too much from Vandaway O'Shea. And for the second time in this quarter, it's a six on four for the Cardinal. Again, one coming back fairly quickly. So back to six on five now. The teams have to make the adjustments. They're playing over physical. Officials will correct that. Around the way now, Aria Fisher. Tries to stuff that up high for the donut. And Caroline Stern is ready. Weber's trying to get on the counterattack, make this a two-goal turnaround. Has to. Credit Flynn and Neuschel. They did an excellent job sprinting back. As yeah. we come up on two minutes to play in this first half, a 4-3 lead for Stanford. National championship match. An exclusion. Vandaway O'Shea cruising in, lets it go, Avatol again. They tried to go quickly on the power play. That ball's up for grabs. And presence of mind for Aria Fisher to race over and get that ball because no one was in the corner just yet for the Cardinal. And usually that's a heads up play, right? Your ejection, your teammate that's been ejected is coming in and they're there, but <laughs> that was not the case. So often, players instinctively just toss into the corner, thinking someone's gonna be there. And that's heads up from the veteran, Aria Fisher, seeing that no one was home to go and grab it. With 1.35 to play, first half. She's on my back and I'm center cage. So I thought I was opening up Aria, because I was sitting in. <laughs> Look at one of our referees, Darren Santo. We'll get things started here. Almost like a TV timeout there. <laughs> Everyone gets a chance to catch their breath. <laughs> it has been a breakneck pace early. Romer, she's pressed out. Long entry in. It comes to Fisher. Steps through. Stern. 
with the stuff. Caroline Stern with some clutch saves here as of late. Now three big blocks for the senior from La Cunada, California. Big save because that was a great turn by Aria Fisher. She usually puts those away, so big, big key save by Stern. Hush child, we're tied. Her second. You know, and then sometimes it's just taking that moment, right? You don't need the perfect pass. You just need to, you see an opening and you go for it. And she has that killer instinct and you see it there. She just sees an opening and she nails it. And you hit on it earlier. They're going to give the Trojans the outside shot. They've got to start taking those. And now look, especially second half, that doesn't open up some things inside two meters. And also, Stafford's been getting kicked out a lot, so their zone might be even deeper, trying to prevent that. So that game, the outside game, will definitely be there. Hoschild, the All-America pick with the goal. And now the takeaway. Weber picks the pocket. Neutral excluded on the way down. Things developing right now for USC. Neutral swimming off. An eighth power play on the way. We're under 35 seconds to go. A chance for the Trojans to pull in front. They trailed 4-1. This is a big one. It's Hoschild, she's had the hot hand, goes to Tahaney. Yanov, Hoschild, not there. Sides coming even. It's Hoschild, Weber, save, Avatar. Big save, I mean, you wanna put it in Weber's hand, right? So it's just one of those where the defense, the five on six is really coming up big for both teams. Final seconds, can Flynn get a shot away? Lob up, stern up high, tips it out, and that's how this first half comes to a close. High energy to start our national championship. Stanford takes a 4-1 lead, credit USC, Brenda. They come back and tie this at four. Yes, and I mean, are we surprised? No, these are top two teams with an arsenal of players and they just need to find a way to get the goals. It's not always pretty, it's not always perfect, just as long as they get them. Caroline Stern, a huge block. We're gonna talk here with Stanford coach John Tanner momentarily as Stern with a tip out there as the buzzer sounds to preserve this tie, 4-4. Four, four. And now we welcome in Coach John Tanner. JT, get out to the good start. What'd you like about that 4-1 beginning and where do you want to go second half? Well, we were really mobile on defense, created some opportunities and early offense, and then we were scoring our six on five. I think we missed a few reads there, obviously on six on five in the second quarter. So we just got to do better with our, with our uh, high scoring uh, or high percentage opportunities. So um, on the defensive end, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how things are going. We've done a nice job in front of the goal on, uh, on turns, but um, yeah, that was a little rough the last few minutes, five on six. So what do you tell your team now, right? You have a great start, you wanna get it going again. So what's your one word that you get, that you tell them to get them going in the second half? Oh, we just need to keep things simple. I mean, we're, we've got uh, reads available on uh, six on five and in our front court offense, but yeah, we've gotta get a little better tempo and keep things simple. JT, thanks for the time. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Coach John Tanner and the Stanford Cardinal jumped out to a 4-1 lead as JT mentioned, did some things they liked, but the Trojans not going away that easy. We're even at four in this rematch of last year's national championship. More water polo when we return to Stockton. Second half on the way. Big energy here in the Central Valley, even at four in this NCAA Women's Water Polo Championship. First half numbers, Cardinal getting the opportunities. Now within that 0 for 6 on the power play, two of those were six on four. So really only four power play trips. Conversely, USC, they'll look at three and eight and say, we could be ahead by so much more. Yes, I think Stanford needs to keep it simple, like Coach Tanner said, and make those reads. USC needs to keep doing what they're doing. They're being mobile, they're creating those rejections, and they just need to keep firing and follow Paige's lead. And here's the man at the helm of the ship, Marco Pinterich, three times the MPSF Coach of the Year in the last three years. National Coach of the Year back in 2021 when the Trojans picked up their last NCAA title. He is a man of Troy through and through, played for USC, longtime assistant, and now the head man of both programs. We are underway here in the third quarter. Teams have switched ends. It's USC and the Whitecaps 
moving left to right on your screen. That's the Trojans in the dark. Brenda Villa, Greg Meskel here with you on a Sunday evening in Stockton, California. Thanks for joining us. Well, he's here about Pac-12 after dark on the football field. We've got it here in water polo, late night on the East Coast for those tuning in. And we are even at four. Have a good one in this national championship showdown. You already feel like both teams have settled down a little bit, so it'll be interesting to see who can rise and make plays. Like Ariel Fisher there, getting that steal. You're so spot on. Have they gotten the jitters out, I guess, is the big question. Yes. It seems like they settled <laughs> in in that second quarter. And really, can you keep competing at that level for four quarters? Our game is too hard to do that. <laughs> Honestly, right? You've got to settle down. Offensive. Ariel Fisher was wide open. Officials determining perhaps a little too wide open. A kick is the ruling there. They got her free. And now the Trojans looking to answer. On the hand, a penalty. Again, USC pushing the tempo. Hochschild finds Kearns. This time when she makes the turn, she draws the five meter and an opportunity for USC to take the lead. You know, sometimes it's taking those risks, putting that pass up there. There was two Stanford defenders and it landed in her hand and she was able to draw that penalty. Here's Hochschild. Opening moments of the third, looking for her third. Save, Avatar, ranging right. We talk about those big moments and who's gonna rise to them. That's a great save by Avatar. There have been a host of fantastic penalty shot blocks this weekend here at the NCAA Water Polo Tourney. Here's Romer now. She'll give a look and Caroline Stern up to the task. Turns away the shot from Jill Romer. We stay even here early moments, third quarter. And I was kidding about the tempo, right? They're going back <laughs> at it again. They're rising it. They're going to say, who's going to push it? This okay. is what all the practices were for. You empty the tank in a game like this. Yeah, you're not saving it for anything. Hochschild, they're looking to double Kearns. Fisher picks up Hochschild. Shot clock to five. Osnar pushed backwards. Timer to two. They got to go. That cross cage rope knocked away. Avatar there with the save. Yeah, if you're Stanford, that's what you want to do, right? You, you make them use the whole shot clock, and then the shot is telegraphed, so you could minimize the, the effect of that attack. Neuschel, pressured out high by Tahaney. And Entry in, go. Aria gets inside water, moving in, tries to draw a penalty, letting go of that ball. She wanted the call. They don't give it, and we go the other way. Great pass in. Um, that's a great matchup. I just think sometimes it's an unlucky break right there. On this end now, Osnar gets inside water. She lost the handle. Weber scoops it up. Spin move. She's stuffed. What a save from Avatar. And it's just that second effort, right, by everyone, by, the, by Weber, by the goalie, by the defense. Now on this end, an ordinary as Fisher draws a double. That was beautiful from Weber, couldn't finish. And now a takeaway, they tried to spot Flynn diving towards the cage but as our goalies are doing the job. Seven stops for Stanford, five for USC. And the Trojans will call for time. Pump the brakes on this a bit with 5.16 to go in the third quarter. We know from a fitness standpoint, Brenda, they can do it. But to your point, how taxing is it mentally to keep up with this go, go, go atmosphere? It is really taxing, right? And then it goes into, like, where are your veteran experienced players? When do you know to take a second and maybe not push it? When do you know, hey, let's be more practical, let's be realistic? So you got to pick your moments. And right now I think both teams are just so amped that they're not picking their moments. We talked about the goalkeeper numbers. Avatar against Stern, two players that have bided their time to become the keeper. And any of these programs that make the national championship, you rarely come in as a freshman and get to be the starter. Usually you have to work your way up to get that opportunity. And we look at what they have done on the year. And of course, Avatar, the keeper for the champs a season ago, and two of the best in the cage. Yeah, now, now they're veterans, right? Yep. But they weren't always veterans, but they were put into that high-pressure situation. They both have done a really great job for their programs. They've led them. They've anchored down on defense. So we expect these penalty saves and these big moments by these top goalkeepers. And again, it goes back to knowing the team so well. 
how many penalty shots have they seen. They know their tendencies. We talk about their connections here meeting in the regular season. Keep in mind, a lot of these players, they go back to high school. They've seen each other compete. Yes. They've played club water polo together. They've been on the national team together. They have seen so many shots. They're ready in these big moments. And even right now, right, they know each other so well. There's a timeout play. There's substitutions happening at the last minute, like switches on matchups. So it's, it's fascinating. <laughs> USC getting more opportunities. We're even up at four. Out of the timeout, where do the Trojans go here? Kearns lurking on the inside. Lefties camped out near side. Osnar to Haney with four. Avatar add another save to her tally. And if you, I don't know if you caught it, but you hear <laughs> Pinterest over here saying, be aggressive, aggressive, shoot the ball. So don't give up your opportunities when you have them. And that's to all the youngsters out there too. Don't pass up your opportunities. Sometimes it's as simple as see it, shoot it. Exclusion. Power play. Cardinal on the advantage. Tahaney swimming off. Stanford breaks through on the six on five and Nusha gives a fist bump. They've been knocking on that door for a while. They pull back in front by one. And, and it was movement, right? If you notice the ejection earned was out here on the perimeter. Emma with Ella Woodhead is there moving, it's tight defense, and then Ryan, she finally gets a touch on the ball. She's like, I'm gonna shoot this because I may not get it again. <laughs> Nusha with two now, 64 on the year. Coming up on four minutes to play in this third quarter. And here we have USC kind of taking it down a little bit. Burns again, camped out inside. Giral looking for an angle. Shot clock forces Giral to shoot. It's over the cage with seven on the timer. And maybe that was a possession, right, that SC is thinking about. Oh, that's an unlucky. Good call, almost a steal, but went over her body. And now an exclusion on Vandeway O'Shea. Commits the ordinary that doesn't back off. You have to give the player who's been fouled an opportunity, a little space to breathe. Instead, she's excluded, and Stanford back to work on the power play. Nuschel had the last one. It's Romer. Good look. Good result. Joel Romer. Stanford up two. And it's these little moments, right, where if you're that defender, just give the extra space. You kind of, you see the flow of the game. You don't want to give up that kick out, right? Because now Stanford's getting a momentum swing. So it's just a recheck for all players right now. It's like these little moments matter in the grand scheme of things. And Jewel Romer, the junior from Martinez, California. Crown Tanner raves about her abilities. Yeah, Talks if you saw the being. shot off her hand, it was <laughs> so quick. I, I didn't even know it had left her hand. Skimmed the head of Bailey Weber yeah. just about. Tough angle to hit. And just that fast, Stanford, who led by three in the first half, they have rebuilt a two-goal advantage here. USC with a chance to return fire now on the power play. Their ninth look on the six on five. Both lefties are in, Paige. Let's try oh, In front, Giral. That was a good, simple, quick attack by USC. You want to go to your post. You have Paige out top, so that was a great read by USC. Way to kind of kill the momentum that Stanford had been building. Osnar to Giral. The connection from Barcelona. They team up and cash in one goal game. Stanford. And then the team that can do back-to-back -back saves, right? Back-to-back -back stops. A kick out again. So Stanford now has gotten into a groove here, drawing exclusions as Weber swims out. And it's it's from others, right, going into set. It's not just like Aria, who's your typical center. It's trying to utilize everyone on that team. Fisher cruises inside. Good look across the way. A few fakes, and it's Sophie Wallace's turn to deliver. 
you know, for a team that doesn't have a lefty in there, that was a great attack. You had Ruschel setting up her teammate, and that's what six on five should be all about, is you catching a shooter, maybe one fake, because your teammate has done a great job setting you up. And one fake is all it took. Watch that fake, it gets Kerbs off kilter, and she's falling under the water. That opens a window for Wallace to hit. One thing Coach Kaporian from Team USA said recently was, you know, five on, six on five is a selfish act. You set up your teammates and you give a pass and then that's how they score. And that's exactly what happened for the Stanford Cardinal. Trojans try to go inside, looking for a move. That's Weber, she's surrounded and a ball under. And the way the defense is crashed, that has to happen quickly or it's yeah. gonna be very difficult for the offensive player to move. I think if, and then you think about where's the referee position to the to the center, but I think it was such a quick flash. JT, Coach JT talked about being mobile. That was mobile defense that prevented maybe a penalty there. Coming up on two minutes now, third quarter. Neutral goes live. That's just off the post. The rebound not there. Excellent follow from Skylar Jones just off the mark. That was a lucky bounce that USC needed. Now out in front. Hoschild moving in, low skip, stop. Avatal turns it back. And the Cardinal now looking to answer. Brooke Outlet on this end. Skyler Jones trying to power past Kearns. And now do you settle down a little bit? Do you keep attacking? Like who's gonna get the control of this game? It's Nushal. Wallace. Field block, sky high, Kearns, and she tracks it down with 90 seconds to play in the third. And for 10 big blocks, Maya Avatal has had some epic denials here. Looking to spin, Giral, just an ordinary. Great balance by Nushal there. It seemed like she was going to get turned, but she was great balance in the pool. A kick out on this side. That was Wallace into the suit there on Osnar. Osnar moving in low. Skip Avatar, another block. They're having a tough time putting it past Maya Avatar. You know, and sometimes as a shooter, right, it's like, do I want to go for that quick or do I want to give the goalie an opportunity to keep getting hotter? So it. You know, but at this point in the game, USC has to keep attacking. And she is heating it up. There's no doubt about that. Avatar now, 10 stops. Shot clock to six. Woodhead, knocked down with three. And ball under. Woodhead has it taken away by Hoschild. It's about a five second difference. Shot and game clock. We have SC with a slight advantage. If, oh, that's a great steal. That and now it's away. a two-on-one, maybe the other way. If they look, and they've got it. Neuschel, Fisher filling a lane. Neuschel out in front. Ryan Neuschel moving in. Has Fisher, takes it herself. And that's a moment that you rise, right? It's hard. Do you, does she see Arya behind you? Maybe, but you know what? She had that inside water. She's going to finish. Her third goal. Stanford back in front by three. They rebuild the 4-1 edge. Now it's 8-5. Aria Fisher filling that lane. Defender stuck with Nuschel. Nuschel called her own number, and she has three big goals. But that was from Rowe, Lexi Rowe over there. She came up with that huge steal because Stanford was down in the backcourt, creates an advantage out of a great defensive play. Seven on six look now for USC. Empty cage here. Field player in the goalie cap. It's Vandeway O'Shea. Four seconds left. Hoschild with two. O'Shea, Vandeway O'Shea at the horn. Aria Fisher stomps that down. And that's all through three periods. Monster stop from Stanford. And they have a huge answer here in this third quarter. They take a tie ball game and rebuild a three goal advantage. The latest. Nusha moving in, takes a look, takes it herself. She's got three, the Cardinal up three. Fourth quarter's up next.
goalkeeping telling the story for the Stanford Cardinal in that third quarter, Maya Avital. 10 saves thus far, a lot of big stops. She shared the musical preferences of the Stanford Cardinal squad earlier this week. Instead of practice, it's got to be loud and 130 beats per minute or more to get the energy ready for moments like this. Brenda, if you're curious, their favorite song, Lil Uzi Vert, If I Just Want to Rock. They're rocking right now. <laughs> I personally like Beyonce, Crazy in Love, but it's the beat. It's that high energy beat that gets you going. And we're underway in the fourth. It'll be USC now having to turn it up on their end. Stanford eight minutes away from repeating as national champs. And they get the turnover. Looking for their ninth title in program history. And moving in, here's a problem. Tip out, big save from Stern. Turning away that try from Lexi Rao who came in. Hey, that's the goalie keeping them here. Killing that momentum for Stanford from that third quarter. Good, great save. Cardinal last went back to back in 14-15. Trojans not interested in such a stat. Opening possession and Stanford won't get a second bite at the apple this time down. And then an ordinary as Tilly Kearns looks to advance. A little a five on five here. Great foul by Ryan Nusho to kind of start that momentum. It was a silly turnover that just happened by not popping it. I think the big moments sometimes catch up with you. Hoschild now. Cardinal doing a great job pressuring USC. They have to use a lot of their shot clock. A little over aggressive this time down. Power play here for USC. Big chance early in this fourth quarter for the Trojans. Hoschild. Tilly Kearns back in the pool, causing all that attention and creating opportunities. Where's the angle for the Trojans? Osnar lets it go. Little sidearm drops it down, puts it up for 90. And the power play shot is there for USC. That was a great setup by Page. That was a great interjection by Tilly. So that's what SC is going to have to do to get back into this game is utilize all their assets to set up that fourth big player to make those big goals. And it's the redshirt junior, Osmar, her 35th goal on the year. Sat out two years to train for Tokyo. The heartbreak did not make that team for Spain. She's back here and still playing a massive role for this Trojan squad. You know, that's the huge benefit of, of the NCAA and having, you know, the opportunity to play in college sports here in the U.S. Aria Fisher working on Hoschild. An exclusion on Hoschild, a power play here for Stanford. They turned that around. They were 0 for 4 initially, now 3 for 7. Here's their eighth opportunity. It'll be interesting. I believe that might be Hoschild's second ejection. So do they... Oh, uh, no look! Romer on the inside, slam it home. Stanford. And that's Christina Hicks in the 14 cap. How about this pass? John Tanner says Jewel Romer has the vision of an owl, 360 degrees. She that wasn't looking at Hicks, but she found her. I mean, at the end of my career, I was on that lefty side, and I was not making those passes. So that <laughs> is some vision right there. Beautiful dish from Romer. Hicks is in the mix. And Stanford back in front by three. Under six and a half to play here in the fourth. SC has to remember their outside inside game. That was working for them, and now that Tilly's back in. Looking for Kearns, but they have blanketed the center from Australia. It's Osnar off the post. And then the rebound controlled by Avital as we come up on six minutes to play. You're right, Tilly Kearns is in. USC has been unable to get the ball to her. She's drawn a couple of exclusions. No clean looks. Here's an exclusion down here. But then tipped away, good fight from Hoschild, immediately jumps in that passing lane as they tried to go quickly. You know, and that's, is that a calculated risk? Yes. Will it, pun it, will it hurt them later? We don't know yet. As Netherton now will come on. Osnar takes a breather. Trojans in need of offense. Vanderlei O'Shea looking in at Kearns. Netherton, the freshman now, with five. She'll have to be a shooter. That skip is hauled in by Avital, right at the whole way. Stanford now looking to counter. 
Duschel. Oh, out in front of Hochschild for a moment. Hochschild almost stole that pass with a tip. Aria Fisher wide open at six meters. They get it to her. That's a heavy foul and then some. And that may be all for Honey Vandeley O'Shea. Took Aria Fisher under the pool. And we're going to get a timeout called by Stanford. So Honey Vandeley O'Shea tangled up with Aria Fisher and then Netherton on the back end of that is sent off. Let's get a second look here. Vandeley O'Shea, and she goes over the top, takes Aria Fisher down. And she has been sent off from this match. And then on the back end of that play, we'll have to get a second look at what happened to Morgan Netherton and why she was excluded. So Aria Fisher, and Brenda, you hit on it early on. If Aria Fisher can maintain her composure, she stayed calm in a moment yes. that you'd understand if she reacted differently. Yes, and I think you see her now in the clip, right? It's like telling her teammates, we've got to stay calm. It is going to get physical. You have a lead. SC's doing everything in their power to get back into this game. Here's a look at Aria Fisher. Two-time NCAA champ. What hasn't she done? Two, two Olympic golds, all MPSF, all American pick. You can imagine she'll be in the conversation for the Patino Award this year as Honey Vandeway O'Shea heads to the bench. And there are these moments, right, like as a, such a dominant physical center, you are going to get these extra hard fouls, so she does need to just remember to stay composed. Hopefully we'll get a clarification here from the officials. Five eleven to go. Fourth quarter. A six on four for Stanford after the game exclusion on Vandeway O'Shea and then the exclusion on Netherton. Big chance here for Stanford. Neuschel, Romer. Double stack there, interesting formation by Stanford. Neuschel a fake, one coming back. Romer inside, Sophie Wallace slams it in and Stanford takes their largest lead of the day. They go in front 10-6 the passing right like we go back to Romer you talk about the vision that JT says she has that was a great feed she's so strong at facilitating Romer and JT really goes into the vocabulary to describe her but <laughs> says her genius lies in the gaps of the game wow and that's what it is right yes those are the moments that are kind of hard to quantify but she sees it, makes the pass, and Wallace makes Water the score. Water polo is all about gray area. So if you can, exactly, <laughs> the gap, the gray area, if you can conquer those, you're you're a pretty good water polo player. It's a 10-6 lead. Trojans in a major hole right now. We'll have to try and climb out to Haney. Here's Hosh Child. SC going into a double set there. I think trying to create more space for their shooters on the outside. Shot clock to three, now two. Weber, tough angle to Haney at the horn and puts it away of the goal. Can't get that on cage with 4.16 to play. Stanford in the driver's seat here. So now you're going to see what different tactics um, SC is going to be running. That was a double set. They're trying to get some offense going early on to capitalize on the four minutes that are left in this game. They force the ball under. Ural comes up with a takeaway. Moving out in front, and an exclusion chance here for the Trojans. Five on six, and there's Paige. This is a must-have here for USC. Passes. Paige was ready for that. It just wasn't a clean, clean pass. Under four to play, and now the Cardinal able to settle in to their player down defense. Weber, here's Kearns looking for any kind of chance down low. They've bottled her up. Hoschild gets it back. Someone's got to shoot it. Tilly Will. 
Yellow card to Marco Pinterich sharing his thoughts with the officials, but Tilly Kearns gets a much needed power play goal for USC. I think there was, I would say a little overpassing, but it worked out for them. Tilly was ready. She, she's ready, right? She's ready for that moment. She just wants the ball. And when you're a center, it's sometimes hard to get the ball because rightfully so, everyone's trying to keep the ball from you. <laughs> she's a target, she knows that. Tilly Kearns has her second. And she talked about it not long ago to the Daily Trojan. She said, she always says the center is as good as the passes she gets from her perimeter players. They found her, she put it away. The Trojans have it back. Now the exclusion against Stanford. Another power play here. Can USC make something happen? Osnar moving in, unguarded. Lefty takes a look and hits. Two goal game just that quick. The power play is good to go for USC. You know, this backward exclusion almost worked out for Romer on that, like, still that SC had, but that was a great execution um, on that far side, that quick goal. You need the quick goals. You need all the time that SC needs all the time that's left. Wallace left Osnar alone. Avatar, she's made so many big stops, but that was tough as the lefty cruised in. Two goal game here. Trojans trying to find a way back into Aria Fisher. Turning, ball under. Tahaney shows up with Weber. They force the takeaway. Judge Pinterich, hand on the air horn, waiting to call a timeout if needed. We're under three to play in the fourth. And it's all time management now, and I think Stanford there needed to use some clock, and SC needs a quick attack. Here's Hochschild, double post look, Weber and Kearns. You're all now into Kearns. She draws an exclusion. Tahaney, you're all now. Power play for USC. Around the way, Hochschild. Two and a half to go, fourth quarter. Another must have for the women of Troy. Good passing, good rotation. Who's, who are they setting up? Who are they setting up? Weber with the drop, still on the advantage here. Seven for 13 on the edge, rebound, batted around. Big save. Huge stop from Stanford. That ball's up for grabs though. They threw it off to the side. Weber will get there first. And the Trojans have it back with 2.10 remaining. An unforced error, uncharacteristic from the Cardinal tonight. And Inside. Ball under, the defense is there. Fisher and Wallace. And it's that <laughs> quarter throw, right? That usually works out and hasn't worked out for Stanford today. That was a big, you know, crash there by Stanford. Stanford will take a timeout. Huge defensive play there after the giveaway. A timeout called with 1.52 to play here in the fourth. A 10-8 lead for Stanford. They led by four. You hear Aria Fisher, if you can read lips, she's telling her team to stop throwing the ball away. They're gonna give fouls. Yes, this is when you say, you you stay up higher in the water. Um, you might not get that easy foul if there's ever an easy foul in water ball. And it's clock management. Everyone is trained for this on both ends, right? Like USC is trained for this in practice. You're down by two. You need a steal. You need a quick attack. So it, it's these moments. It's you who rises up. So now it's a two-minute drill here for USC. They're on defense. They've got to be flawless there. What's your appetite for risk on the offensive end now if you're USC with 152 remaining? You might have to take one now. Um, I would say you have to press, right? Maybe who can go one-on-one -on -one with Arya Fisher? Maybe it's, it's Paige Hochschild, right? She's done it this game. Paige has two ejections, so I don't know if they do that, but you have to take a risk. It's been working for them, right? They, they created these turnovers off of these timeout plays or after goals. John Tanner's squad bouncing back. They let USC get back in this game. Went 4-1 to 4-4. Stanford rebuilt a lead, then went up by four. Trojans trying to make one more push. Stanford looking to repeat as NCAA champions. Romer goes right inside. Just an ordinary as they tried to get neutral. Here's Wallace, Flint. They've held the high scoring freshman at bay thus far. Wallace now with five, with three, lets it go, and 
That slipped out of the hand, went well high in the cage. Timeout called by the Trojans with 1.34 to play. 10-8, and a big opportunity ahead here for USC. And you know, in Stanford's huddle, right, it was use the clock. If you see something, maybe you pass it, but if not, you're patient. Now in USC subtle, it's going to be like, how do we quickly get an attack? How do we quickly get it to our shooters? Um, if you get an ejection, this is what we're going to run. It, very different priorities, right? Yes. When you have a two-goal <laughs> lead, you're trying to get rid of this clock. For USC, you're trying to be as efficient as possible. Now, it's interesting. We talked about prior meetings this year. The very first one, that was a close game. One goal game, 11-10 win for the Cardinal. The two meetings that followed, they were fairly lopsided. 17-12 win for USC back on April 8th, and then a 12-7 win for the Cardinal in the MPSF final. So the team's kind of figured something out in those games to pull away. It would make sense here in the title bout. You're getting each side's very best effort, but it seemed like it was trending that way for Stanford. Credit the Trojans for finding a way. Yes, and, and that's what these great teams are all about, right? You, you find a different gear, or, and also these great coaches, right? You have strategy, something's not working, you've got to switch it up. So credit to, to USC for switching it up to make sure that they're in this game, and they are in this game. A minute and a half, two down, let's go. The eighth all-time meeting in the NCAA final between these two. Trojans with a slight edge. Since 2010, only Stanford or USC has won the title. It'll happen again this year. Just a matter of the outcome. And right now, USC looking for some movement. Trying to get it into Paige's hand. That was a lot of time to get it into her hand. They want to maybe isolate her and Tilly. Shot clock already down to 14. Here all up on her legs, takes a look. Timer to nine. Inside, stuffed home! Weber answers! One goal game, 111 left. The conference player of the year. They've held her in check all night long. Goal number 71 comes when they needed it most. And the patience and the discipline by Garrell on that. Fake, fake, fake. They knew, they gave it to her, and like you said, you know, Big moments are for these players like Daley Weber that's had a great year. Sixth all time in scoring at USC. Now 214 goals in her career. A big one there. Three unanswered now from the Trojans. They trailed 10 6. Can they get one more big stop as we're coming up on a minute to play in this fourth quarter? I would say all the momentum is trending towards them. Romer here. Neuschel battling with Hoschild. Here's Fisher in a tussle with Weber. Double team arrives. Stanford has to be a bit of the aggressor here. Good pass over the top. They hit it. Ella Woodhead. The patience, the trust that you have to have in your teammates. Um, not someone that I don't think is scoring very many goals for Stanford goes on the drive because she's disciplined and then that great pass to a great catch and shoot. You're exactly right. Just her 10th goal. The latest Woodhead to cap up for the Cardinal following brothers Dylan and Quinn. Her mom Laura swam at Stanford. And what a clutch goal for the true freshman. They need a quick one, so what do you do? Do you force it from the outside if you're Stanford? This will help. A power play. They still got to go. Trojans on the quick. attack. Six That's on five here. Giral looking inside. Hoschild moving in. Who wants it? To Haney. Here's Osnar. Let's it go. Field block. Denied by Fisher. Shot clock is off. Stanford up two, and they can swim away with a title. They'll go back to Avatar. Five seconds left. And for the first time since 2014, 2015, the Cardinal will repeat as NCAA champions. What a game. The ninth national championship for the Cardinal. Big embrace for the Stanford.
good staff as the fireworks fly here in Stockton. What a battle like we knew it would be for these two great teams. And an emotional moment there. That's assistant coach Kim Kruger. And I have to find Tell me if I'm wrong, she was part of the Stanford era before championships. Kind of in between your yeah, time in between. and then when they were going to run in the 2010s. Her dad passed this year earlier in the season, and so I think it got like other Stanford supporters, so I think it was just a moment to kind of acknowledge that. Yeah, that's huge. All the smiles in the water. An 11 9 victory for Stanford. There it is one more time. Celebration unlike any other in the sport of water polo. The title, it's coming back to the farm. We'll come back with more from here in Stockton.